from humble beginnings a great air filter is born. So this is what I have got and it's uh, it's not super big not compared to the ones I've seen on TV um, or on the internet rather. It's actually quite small. There's the impeller, there's the housing, the faceplate, and this is the motor. Now it had a one horse motor and it sounds absolutely horrible. I don't know if that's some sort of startup uh, winding brushes, dragon, or if that's bearing noise. I do know it runs. So I'm contemplating putting that two horse motor on. I go back and forth between pulling this apart and doing the bearings and putting the two horse. The, the cyclone that I want to purchase is designed for a 15 inch blower. This one's 12. It's much, much smaller. However, when it's running, the thing sucks like the blazes of hell. So I don't know. That's what I have, and I can't afford the whole system. So I'm thinking about using this, put her back together a little more sealed up, clean up some welds and stuff, uh, file the burrs off the fan. Looks like some stuff has gone through it. Thinking about using this setup here, and and then remote mounting the cyclone filter. I, I suspect I'll be pulling air through it slower than it's designed, and I'll have to contact them and find out if it'll still operate. And if they say that it won't still operate, well, then, then I don't know. Then we're back to either building one or starting from scratch. But this came from the scrapyard, as is. Uh, I'm I'm out its price in scrap electric motor is what I paid for it so I think it was dollar fifty a pound so, yeah I'm not out much if this doesn't work and I can't have my kid up there in the dust it's I just can't and he can't wear a mask so I gotta come up with something and this is what I've come up with you can hear why I say she needs some bearings I suspect this is actually why this unit was scrapped in the first place. But uh, motor bearings are cheap and they're relatively easy to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and see what's inside the old rusty girl before I make the leap to two horse. Before I pull it apart entirely, I've gone ahead and put some marks on it just to help me line it back up where it came from. I guess in theory it doesn't really matter, but you know, it's been together this way for a very long time and they tend to enjoy going back to old habits. Okay, now I actually took it apart backwards. I was hoping I'd be able to get that end off without pulling the armature out, but the armature fell out anyways. Just means I have to put it back together on the inside. There's no indications of it spinning and there's no indications of overheating. But, without a doubt, these are some ugly bearings. You don't want to just throw a big clamp on these things without paying attention or you'll just wreck the motor. So, i got to figure out how to get it apart first. Okay, after some examination, I believe I can just press it off. So, I've got it uh, spaced through the armature, and this is very important the end fan. If you make room for the armature but not the fan at the end, um, then you, you'll destroy everything anyways. So with luck this will pop right out with almost no pressure necessary otherwise uh, you're about to watch me to destroy a motor. Like butter. I don't even have the handle in. So Oh that wasn't good for it. You can't win them all. All that attempt to be careful, and I've been a fan blade anyways. That one right there. I'll uh, I'll straighten it. It'll be fine. I think. It'll be fine. So, yeah, don't be a dumbass. Anyways, i got to pull these washers. It's uh, you got a spring washer, steel washer, and then a felt seal. Those have got to come off. The bearing is super stiff. And rumbly but that could simply be dry grease 
I won't necessarily declare it dead until after I've dropped it in the solvent tank. The reason I can get away with doing this is it's a sealed bearing. So I can get in there and um, hopefully pop her loose. Pop her loose and heat it up. Clean the grease out. Put a vacuum on it. Pull some new grease in. I'll show you that. It works like a charm. Okay, here I am set up to pull the bearing. Uh, I've got, uh, uh, oh hell, I'm not even, can't even remember what those things are called. We'll call it a cradle, for lack of a better term, because I'm having a brain fart. And then a simple two-jaw truck. I have to use a two-jaw truck in order to fit in between the fan blades. Now, if you're not saving this bearing, you could go ahead and pull it, uh, uh, but understand that you will destroy it. You'll shove the dust shield into the ball bearings, so you'll destroy it this way. I'll be able to pull it without destroying it, hopefully, because uh, I still intend to try and see if I can resurrect her. There it is right there. Clearly, clearly um, dried grease inside it. So, uh, I've had pretty... Holy crap, I'm clumsy today. I've had pretty good luck reviving the dry grease. You'll notice that there's that bent fin. I haven't touched it. The chances of bending it once and getting it back really very high. The chances of uh, bending it two or three times very very small. So I'm waiting until everything's all back together just in case you know I somehow screw it up again. I can already tell from spinning it this is going to resurrect just fine. And I know that you know, most people would just simply replace it. Um, it is a bit of a special bearing. At least, anyways, it's got a funny dome shape. But I don't know if I have just been very, very lucky or maybe a little more realistic. Fact is, I, I do this to old tools all the time. And my success rate uh, on bearings that haven't, that don't show heat marks, if it shows any signs of heat, it's trash. Any signs, any bluing of the race or uh, you end up with like rust powder coming out past the dust seals trash just absolute trash but on these old dried up beasties I have had almost a hundred percent success in simply cleaning them up dropping them in the solvent tank um, spinning them spinning them spinning them blowing it out spinning them spinning them blowing it out and then repacking them uh, so once again, I, I don't know if I'm getting super lucky or if bearings are tough. And uh, I do this all the time. What are you out, really? In inspecting and cleaning, by cleaning I just mean brushing off the armature, I discovered something that I'd overlooked. And that is that this, when I dropped it, it isn't the first time this poor girl's had some damage. You'll notice that the top of that fin is missing and that this one is bent in. So something hit it hard there. I'm not going to make any attempt to straighten these. If you attempt to straighten them, you'll break them off. Guaranteed. Yeah, it's, it's not good. It means this motor will always vibrate to some degree. But kind of like with the bearings it's it's just a generic cheap old chunky old used electric motor um, it'll run just fine with a little bit of a buzz to it so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll run it like that and see how she survives here's the final product you can't hear it you'll have to take my word for it but uh, she's good to go not perfect just Good to go. They're two different things. Perfect isn't required. Lifespan is required. I ended up using my uh, vacuum pump method. So uh, if you want to watch that, you can search uh, how to repack sealed bearings on my channel here. And I'll. Oh, train coming. I'm not going to go into it here. I don't have time, but. How to repack sealed bearings. Putting the bearing back on is very easy.
but there is a critical step and that is find yourself a piece of pipe that just fits over and this is important rides only on the inner race you can't push it on from out here okay I've done it you're not supposed to you're not supposed to push it on from out here and you certainly can't push it from the inside right there this just happened to be a, a hunk of I don't know conduit or something it was just the perfect size and so I uh, clean up that burr right there so it doesn't touch my dust seal but then I'll just gently tap it on with the base on a block of wood like that uh, and you go until the bearing seats I've never seen a motor shaft that didn't have a a positive bearing stop if you run into one uh, I guess take a picture and try very very hard to get her back where she belongs you'll know when she's seated because uh, it'll feel different when you tap on it so there it is all back together now I'm gonna straighten that rogue blade that I bent slip her back in and pull the other side apart a little more complicated on this end um, that's been rubbing on the armature and it is packed just packed with sawdust so clearly came out of some wood shop or something so on this end I'm trying hard not to have to pull the startup switch apart but I might end up doing that I've never seen one where they hmm this one here uh, probably have to pop that cap off there's a retaining clip down inside there so it looks like the startup startup switch is gonna have to come off so I'll remove these four screws then that plate will come loose and uh, then I can get at that bearing so here it is it had a felt washer again as a seal it had a flat washer now I was not careful enough when I popped it loose and I badly dented the washer so I will have to clean it and flatten that but the bearings okay so that's fine not as bad as the other end but still a little a little grumbly so first step once again clean it then I'm gonna do my uh, vacuum chamber re-grease job and put her back together so that their bearing is all rebuilt and back in and uh, now I'm gonna give a a clean as best I can in here and try to get this switch back in and maybe see if I can tie those wires in such a way that they aren't quite so that then I gotta get this funk out of here otherwise this motor won't cool properly so there it is with no wires out of the way just time to slip that in tighten her up and find out if we fixed it I think it's been in water I think I think she ran I think it's been flooded at one point which is why ah but the bearings weren't rusty so I'm not sure flooded with dust certainly some sort of wood shop so here it is I have yet to plug it in we're all gonna find out together if uh, what I did helped it so um, I'll go ahead and cut to what it sounded like before and now we'll see what it sounds like after different noise I was a little afraid that whistling would be some sort of vibration resonance you'll notice as you do this um, as the bearings warm up and you're 
and your new grease and your old grease combine that they'll they'll quiet down a little more you can hear it quieting down as we speak um, I believe I'll hold off on the two horse motor I'm not sure it needs it now that this thing is happy and healthy and here is the blower unit all back assembled probably need to wipe a little more silicone on some of those joints but let's fire up <laughs> That squeaking you hear is the startup windings. Um, it's kind of a crappy system. It's got a ring that rides on a, uh, a copper switch. Until it gets up to speed, it, they're in contact with each other. Once they get up in speed, they're no longer in contact with each other. So There it is. Now all i got to do is build a bracket for it up there and bolt it into place and it'll be a little while uh, before I get to it thanks for watching